Hello and welcome to the first part of this crafting queue tutorial series. I'm just going to show you how you can make a simple crafting queue. We have six wood right here and we know that an arrow consumes two wood. So if I click the arrow three times and hop over to the inventory, I'm just going to see that we are going to continually add three arrows. And if I add four more wood to the inventory, and hop over to the crafting tab and hit the arrow two times. I'm going to see a crafting animation from the left to the right. And I have two more arrows. We have a lot to do, so let's stop talking and let's start coding. Let's start by opening up the canvas, the inventory parent, the crafting tab, and also set the inventory parent to active. And then we want to set the crafting tab to active and the inventory tab to inactive like that. Awesome, let's open up the scroll view, view port, and then the cra crafting inventory parent right here. And let's go to the prefabs folder as well and drag and drop a crafting slot prefab in here. Awesome. This is our crafting slot and let's just select the, an image so we can see what we're doing. Let's select the bow for example. And let's now go down here and right click on it and add a new UI element and we want to add a new image. The image is going to scale so hold shift and click on the bottom right right here so that it scales with the parent image that we have and reset all these values to 0, 0, 0, and 0 so that we have it exactly the same size as the image that the parent has. Awesome. For the image, let's now select a bow and for the color and transparency, let's select a black color to the bottom left or bottom right, does not matter. And I have a transparency, let's say something like 150, that's quite all right. And for the image type, we want to select filled and then for the fill method, we want to select something like horizontal and for fill origin, let's select right. Just as you saw in the intro right now, we can now slowly downsize the scaling right here, the fill amount. So if I click on an item, it's going to be set to one and then slowly downscale over time. Let's rename this part to a crafting slider image, for example, and let's now figure out what we want to do. First thing you have to do for the in inventory slider, I have to set up the exact same image as the inventory slider. This is going to stay the same, exactly the same. And we also want to override the prefab. So let's click on these crafting slot prefab and click on override and apply all so that we do not forget about it. And the next thing we have here, we are using the item slot script. So let's go to the scripts folder and open up the item slot script. And what we could do is just add a, a couple of functions right here, which would be quite all right. And then just not use them for the item slot component. But I think the better way would be to right click and create a new C sharp script. And let's call this the crafting slot. Open it up in Visual Studio. And now we can split the item slot to the right of the screen like this. Awesome. And what I want to do, I just want to derive the crafting slot from the item slot so that we have the same exact functionality as this one right now at this moment. Let's now delete these functions so that we have an empty class basically. But since we derive from the item slot, we are still going to have all these functions available to us. So let's go back to Unity, click on the crafting slot prefab. And right here, the item slot script. Let's just remove this component and add a new component and call this the crafting slot. Awesome. For the icon, we just want to drag down the image script. You might have to collapse the button to be able to do that. Awesome, is being dragged, we'll keep that. That's quite all right. And now for the function. So missing game object right here on the button click. So we want to drag and drop the crafting slot prefab in here. Go to the crafting slot and then use item. And the same things right here. So for event trigger on the enter, we want to add a event item and on cursor enter. And for the on cursor exit, we want the on cursor exit function. So right here and on cursor exit. Awesome. Now we have the exact same functionality as we had before, but let's now try to add new functionality to it. So let's open up the crafting slot script and let's start writing some code. So let's make a public game object and let's call this the crafting image game object. This is going to be the reference to our image that we just created earlier. And then we also want a private image. And to be able to use the image component, we want to be using unity engine.ui. Once that is done, the image should turn green. And now let's call this the crafting image. And then we also want some kind of private float. And let's call this the craft time. And right here, we want to set up these two values right at the start. So let's go to the image slot script. And where we have the add item function, we just want to change it to a public virtual void so that we can override it by our script that inherits from the inventory slot. So let's now just go in here and type in public override void and add item. Just hit 
tab, it's going to set it up like this. Base dot add item means that we are going to go to the base right here. So if I hover over it, the item sort of turns green. So I go right here and we call this function. And now we can actually add to this function. And what we want to add is just go to the crafting image. And this is going to be equal to the crafting image game object dot get component. And we want to get the image component of it. Awesome. Just like that. Since we have the image, we want to set up the sprite. So dot sprite is going to be equal to the new item that we passed in dot icon. And then we want to set the image to false. So crafting image game object set active. And we want to set it to false at the start so that we do not have it active if you are not crafting anything. And let's now figure out the craft time. So let's go back to Unity and where we have the crafting recipe script right here. So just double click and open it up in Visual Studio. Add a new property. We can just add it right up here. So a public float and let's call this the craft time and set it equal to something like one floats. You can change that in the editor as you want, but I'm just going to leave it at one second for now and in the crafting slot right here. Now we can get the craft time. So let's now get the craft time and this is going to be equal to the item that we pass in. We have to cast it to a crafting recipe and we want the new item to be cast to a crafting recipe. But now we have to put another pair of parentheses around it. So now the item is going to be a crafting recipe. Now we can access the craft time like this. Awesome. So once again, we are just casting this new item to a crafting recipe because we want to access the craft time right here. And then we just get the craft time and we have to put it in another set of parentheses so that the compiler knows what we want to do with it. Let's also make a private enumerator for the animation right now that we showed earlier. And let's call this the crafting animation. In here, we just want to create a float and let's call this the time elapsed. Set it equal to zero and also set the crafting image game object to active. So crafting image game object dot set active and let's set that to true. And the last thing we want to do is so the crafting image dot fill amount is going to be equal to one float so that it's full at the start. And now we want to get to the fun part, the while loop. So while the time elapsed is less than the craft time that we set up earlier. And while this is true, we want to add to the timer. So time elapsed plus equals time dot delta time. The next thing is just lurping in between two values. So the crafting image dot fill amount is going to be equal to the math f dot lurp. And we want to lurp in between values. So from one float because we are starting at one and we want to lurp down to zero float and we want to lurp by a percentage from the time elapsed divided by the craft time semicolon down here. And then we just want to yield return null. And once we end the enumerator right here where we set the game object to active, we want to set it to inactive. So just set active and false. Awesome. But let's now also create a function in which we can start the enumerator. So let's make a public void and call this something start crafting. And in here, we just want to start a coroutine, start coroutine and crafting animation and another set of parentheses and a semicolon. Awesome. Now we have the basic crafting slot script set up. Let's go back to Unity and set up references before we forget about them. So just click on the crafting slot prefab, which you have in the hierarchy. Scroll down here and the crafting image game object. Just drag and drop this bad boy down here and override and apply all. Now we should be able to delete the script. And if I start the game. I have the exact same thing, just that we have the crafting slider image and it's set to false. Awesome. Let's start setting up our functionality with the inventory script. So open that up and scroll down to the bottom right here. This is going to be quite practical because this is already a singleton and just put a new function down here. So a public void and add crafting item. This is going to take in a new crafting recipe. So crafting recipe and call it the new recipe. Since this is a queue, we have to add a queue right here. So just go at the top and put a private queue in here. So private queue. The queue is going to take in a type of the crafting recipe and let's call this the crafting queue and set it equal to a new queue. And we also want a bool to keep track if we are currently crafting or not. So a private bool is crafting and set it equal to false. Awesome. Now we have a crafting queue. So let's scroll down here. And in the crafting queue, we just want to enqueue the new items. So crafting queue dot enqueue a new recipe that we pass in here. And we want to check if we are not crafting. So if it's crafting, then we want to start crafting because if we are already crafting, we just enqueue an item and we are good to go. But if we are not crafting, we want to start crafting and to start crafting, we want to create a new enumerator. So private enumerator 
and call this the craft item. This is going to be a quite complicated function. First off, we want to get the recipe that we want to craft next. So a crafting recipe, let's call this the current recipe, is going to be equal to the crafting queue dot dq, which is a function which just gives you the first one available to you. Next up, we want to actually craft the recipe. So to do that, we just want to yield and return a new wait for seconds. And we want to wait for the current recipe dot craft time and just for safety reasons, let's put in something 1.1 float so that we wait a little bit longer than the crafting time actually is. And once we finish crafting it, we want to add items to the inventory. But there are still a couple of errors that can happen. First off, we have to check if we have enough resources before we start crafting and waiting for the item. And we also have to check right here when we call it for safety reasons if the crafting queue has actually an item. So check if queue is empty, which we can just do by crafting queue dot count. And if this is equal to zero, then we want to return. And to return out of AI numerator, you just go in here and type in yield and break. And down here, we want to check if we want to continue crafting. So if the crafting queue dot count is greater than zero, then we want to continue crafting, which means that we want to yield and return and we want to return this same function which means that if we craft one item we want to hop back to the top and craft an item again and this is just basically something like a while loop but i want to try something different as well so let's start a new coroutine and we want to start the coroutine and craft item like that this is how you make recursion in ai numerator in c sharp and unity awesome this is the base logic setup for our crafting and right here, where we check if we are crafting, we want to actually start crafting. So is crafting is going to be equal to true once we start crafting. And then we want to call the coroutine. So start coroutine and craft item. And now in every single position, we have to add that we are not crafting anymore. So is crafting and set it to false once we stop crafting right here. If we are not calling the recursion, we also want to set the is crafting to false right here. Awesome. And now we have a base logic set up. But to actually check if we have enough resources, we have to go to the crafting recipe class and change up a couple of things in here. First thing I want to do, when we click an item, I don't want to check if we can craft it or not. I just want to go to the inventory dot instance and then I want to add crafting item and I want to add this, this script to the crafting queue. This is quite all right because we are going to check later on for the can craft function and remove ingredient. That's what we want to do later. And in here, I just want to make a new function, a public bool this time and craft item. This function is going to get called by the inventory when we are at this item in the queue. So if we dequeue this item, we are just going to call the can craft item function and this is going to return us if we can craft it or not, a boolean, and then actually craft the item. So in here, we just want to check if the can craft function is going to be true. And if it is not true, then we want to return false. And else we want to return true. And if we can craft the item, we want to remove the ingredients from the inventory. That's quite all right. That's the same thing we had before. And now we want to start crafting. But we have no way to know which slot belongs to this crafting recipe right here. And to keep track of that, I want to set up a new private variable. And let's make this a private crafting slot because we want to keep track of which crafting slot belongs to this crafting recipe because we are only going to have one recipe per one slot and let's just call this the parent crafting slot and we want to be able to assign it so let's make a public void set parent slot we want to pass in a crafting slot in here and just call this the slot in the body of the function we just want to assign the parent crafting slot to the slot that we pass in awesome now we have a reference to the crafting slot which is this function right here and once we get right here to the craft item function we want to start crafting which means that we want to activate the start crafting function which then will activate the enumerator, which will show us the image slowly going to the right. Now, since we have a re reference to the crafting slot, so just go down here and type in parent crafting slot. And the function which you want to call is the start crafting. So parent crafting slot dot start crafting like that. Awesome. So the crafting recipe, once it gets clicked, it's just going to add itself to the crafting queue. And once the inventory is ready to craft this item, we want to check if we have enough resources left to craft it, then remove the items and start the crafting animation. Awesome. But we still have to set up the crafting recipe somehow. Let's, and to do that, just go to the inventory UI where we actually spawn the inventory prefabs. And down here where we have the set up crafting recipes function, it's going to be quite simple. Let's make a reference to the crafting recipe and let's call this the craft recipe and set it equal and we are going to cast the recipe again so the crafting recipe and then we want to put in a recipe right here so that we have a reference to the crafting recipe as a crafting recipe which is quite important then we want to call the craft recipe dot set parent slot 
and we want to pass in a crafting slot. But we do not have a reference to a crafting slot right here. So just instead of the item slot, let's use the crafting slot as the slot and also get component and crafting slot. Now we have a reference to the crafting slot that it sits on and we can just pass it in here. So now the crafting recipe gets a reference to the slot that it sits on. Awesome. Let's now go back to the craft item function in the inventory and let's add our check. If the current recipe dot craft item, which is just going to start all the functionality, if this is going to be true, we know that we have enough resources and that we can craft an item and this function already takes care of removing the resources and starting our enumerator animation but now we want to check if this is not true so if we cannot craft an item then we want the crafting queue dot clear function because we want to clear all of the recipes that are queued just as in most games i think it is and we're just going to finish the crafting task which means that we have to set the is crafting to false and also yield and break and after we finish the time for the animation then we want to add the item to the inventory. So just go in here and add item. And we want to add the current recipe dot results to the inventory. Awesome. So this should already work quite all right, I think. So let's just try it out in Unity. Let's add a couple of items, for example, four wood, which means that we can craft two arrows. So if I click on the arrow, it's going to craft the one arrow and add it to the inventory right here. And if I click it again, we're going to see the animation loading and we're going to have a second arrow. And if I do this again, so if I have four wood and go to the crafting tab and hit the arrow twice, so one and two, I'm going to see two animations and two arrows right here, which means that we have a queue fully functioning. And if I click on the arrow or something else more a couple of times, I'm going to just enqueue the item. And then once I dequeue it, I'm going to figure out that I do not have enough resources and I'm just not going to craft it at all. Awesome. Let's go back to the four wood example one more time. So if I go to the crafting tab, I click twice the arrow icon. And if I craft it, it's going to add the item, but we get an error right here in Unity because we are not able to use the enumerator and icon right here and then we see that it bugged out on us that the enumerator just stopped halfway through let's try and fix that so go to the crafting slot script in here we have the problem that we are trying to start this core routine and finish it even if we have the whole game object inactive which means that we switch to the inventory so in here i should definitely first off try and check if the game object dot active in hierarchy if this is true then i want to start the core routine if this is not true i do not want to make any animation work and also one important thing Thing that we have to do as well we want to add a private void and on disable which just means that once we set the whole thing inactive we want to reset the image and just stop all coroutines so just type in here stop all coroutines we want to stop the enumerator once we disable this item and we also want the crafting image game object dot set active to and set it to false so that if we disable the game object which means that we switch to the inventory we just want to stop the coroutine right here and then also set the image to inactive let's go back to unity and try it out this time i have six wood right here and i click the arrow icon a couple of times and now i'm going to get one arrow two arrows three arrows and nothing else and no errors awesome this was it for this part in the next part we're just going to add a little number at the bottom right of the item which will display us how many items you have currently in the crafting queue for for each individual item be sure to join my discord channel it's linked down below and i will see you in the next one bye